you know, one thing that we dealt with, especially earlier on on the space station program, is because of uh, the really the software um, uh, mountain that space station is. There's over 50 flight computers and uh, uh, relatively complex um, software in, in all of them. Uh, of course, you have schedules that you need to meet, and and uh, there's always um, uh, issues that come up with the software, especially as you start piecing things together in simulators. Uh, you have to uh, decide where you're going to draw the line and deliver um, the software. And uh, a lot of times we would have um, workarounds. We call them station program notes or, or spins that documented uh, from the development community how you can work around this particular um, software error and then in the perfect world we'd put that down into procedures and if we had to training um, to uh, to deal with the software workarounds you had to put in place and of course those are unavoidable we all realize that but uh, one of the things that happened to me is when 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 faced with looking at these workarounds um, sometimes when when, when we were um, pushing back on the workarounds a lot of times uh, we'd be asked the question um, you know, is it, is it workload? Is it too much work? Why don't you want to do these things? And, and to me as an operator, you know, we're, we're always there. But every time you introduce a, a workaround, uh, to me as an operator, it's just introducing risk. Uh, most of these workarounds involve inserting people, either, either the guys on the ground doing flight control or the crews on orbit having to uh, remember something or do something in a particular way that may not be intuitive. And uh, every one of those things we, we um, took introduced risk. Um, one or two issues that you had to work around that way were fine, but, but you could find yourself in places where the schedule had pushed you where you may have been taking an uncomfortable amount of risk with those workarounds. And my message there would be make sure that you're not just looking at the individual workarounds, but occasionally look at your entire package of workarounds that you're doing on a particular software drop to make sure that you um, have assessed the risk for that package as the whole and not just individual issues, any one of which in isolation may not be that big of a deal. One thing that, uh, that we've uh, been uh, um, learning from with the space station is uh, how different systems that are, are uh, developed by different groups of people, um, you know, how well do we understand how they all work together and or, or, or maybe how that, well they don't work together and, and kind of uh, applying some fixes to that. Um, one thing in particular that's interesting about Space Station is uh, uh, Space Station has very large um, solar arrays. Um, that were based on uh, Space Station Freedom and then kind of uh, carried forward design-wise into the space station that we have today. Um, those were developed by one group of folks, um, uh, mainly out in California. And then we've got um, uh, thrusters on board the space station that are controlled by the uh, Russian segment and controlled by Moscow and were originally developed as part of uh, what was to become Mir-2. And uh, we put these together inside of the space station. Uh, we also got guidance software on the, um, on the NASA side of the vehicle that was developed um, by another group of folks. And uh, what's interesting, of course, is how our guidance software um, works with and fires the Russian thrusters um, can potentially have an impact on um, the space station solar arrays. In fact, we uh, spend uh, an enormous amount of, um, of what I call operations time, but it involves the engineering community, just making sure that uh, those arrays are positioned such that um, we don't um, overload them. And by all means, if, if they're put in the wrong place, we can buckle those arrays with our jets. Uh, on the Russian segment, but also making sure that we've got them in the correct position that they generate power, which which is what their function is. Um, it was kind of funny. We didn't really we we didn't really come to the realization that this was a significant integrated problem until really we're almost ready to launch those and install them on the space station. And um, we've had to um, apply uh, a lot of 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 engineering and just making sure that. Uh, we can um, we can uh, adequately run the vehicle and also keep the solar arrays safe. And it's really, um, all the folks do a really good job of it, but it's almost uh, 
almost what you would consider from a, a programmatic level, kind of a Band-Aid approach that we've been doing. And uh, you want to make sure that, um, you know, for future programs, uh, one of the ways we ended up with it in the space station is just the political nature of how we put the vehicle together using some Russian pieces and some American pieces. And, and you know, we, we have to operate what we have. Um, but the uh, analog is for future programs is that if you have – um, major components being delivered by different groups of people, either different contractors um, within the NASA community or international partners, that um, early on you make some effort to identify what potential integration issues may we have when we start to operate this equipment together um, to make sure that you can apply some uh, smart engineering uh, and some design up front to um, avoid uh, having to essentially come up with a Band-Aid approach, which could be relatively expensive and a little bit higher risk than you'd like um, down the road when you're operating the system. Another example of sort of the uh, software development conundrum um, that we ran into in Space Station, because of the nature of Space Station where we had different groups of um, uh, people, different organizations handling different um, parts of the vehicle flight software, um, you had folks that were geographically separated um, building software up to an ICD, an uh, interface control document between the software, but yet because of just how we're set up, um, especially in the development phase, there was no place where all the software was sort of running in an environment where it was flying in space and also where, you know, one group of integration people really understood in a lot of detail on how those two pieces of software would work together. And, you know, kind of one example that was, was really um, no impact, but kind of interesting is that uh, uh, we had, um, there's, there's software on board the vehicle in the, in the guidance system that um, detects um, sunrise and sunset. And uh, that's all in the interface control documents. And it says the sun is going to rise at this time and it broadcasts that data. And then there's um, a set of software that handles um, in, the, uh, in the electrical power system that needs that data and, and adjusts, um, uh, adjusts parameters within the electrical power system based on, on how long the sun is up. Um, well, it all worked pretty well, but uh, on orbit one day we're – we're sitting there, and, and as it turns out, the orbit of the space station, occasionally the sun actually does not set. They're, um, they're usually around the, uh, the solstices in the summer and winter, and, and, and the sun, you don't fly through the Earth's shadow. Well, the, the guidance flight software just puts out a flag saying that um, um, I'm not going through the shadow of the Earth anymore. And uh, because of kind of a, a misunderstanding of, of the orbital mechanics, the electrical power um, software developers um, interpreted that as it was some sort of failure. And so they, uh, their software reacted accordingly. And of course, the first place that we ever actually discovered that was, was on orbit. And, uh, and, and part of that is just an element of not rarely running all that software together in that unique environment of orbital mechanics where the sun is at the exact right angle that only happens around, um, you know, December and, and uh, June. And so that was, uh, it's kind of a, a funny story. There's, there's a number of, of things like that where you just run into some integration challenges um, because there's not one master um, piece of software running all of this, but you've got to sort of farm out the development in, 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 in pieces as a project of that magnitude requires.